Hello friend, I am Lynn and today we're going to talk about a whole lot of stuff and the title of the blog is Has Everything We Were Taught Been Lies? So hang tight, grab some coffee, sit back, relax because here we go. Okay everyone, so I'll get right to the question. I've heard a theory that many things, things you wouldn't consider in school curriculum are just parroting of various agendas that they're trying to push. What are your thoughts? Thanks. And what I'm referring to are things that seem like facts that have occurred in events, um, just different parts of life. We're questioning everything here. What is really going on? What's happening with our society decade after decade and generation after generation? So the first thing that I heard when I read that question was, what if everything you were taught in school was a lie? I mean, just think about that. How would you feel if you really thought, what if even half of it was lies? Half of it was just made up because they didn't know and they had to justify or explain something that was out there and someone else stood to make money. So they just make up stuff and share it with you. That's kind of the vibe I got when I approached this question. And then I got that, uh, a, a list basically emerged in my mind. The first being Columbus sealed the ocean blue in 1492. What if that didn't really happen? Or what if uh, it was really important to just weave this story of a colonization of how we came to be and the way we inhabited the land, but maybe they didn't even know. So they just made that whole thing up and, and taught it to everybody. I do get that people from Europe came to the Americas and they settled here, but they weren't the first. I got that hundreds of years ago, people from the Scandinavian areas, these Vikings, they explored the land, they came in through, um, what is it, the, the St. Lawrence Strait, is that what it's called up in Canada? I can see it in my head where the, the Great Lakes are and there's a, a strait that comes through there and they entered into the middle of the continent, left their mark. There's probably some civilization remnants, some, some signs that they were there and I got that it they came in through that main waterway, through that strait, and that was just a, a common practice for them. They were here way before Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And then I got they created this this 1492 to blur how the Europeans settled here. In reality, a civilization was already here and destroyed, leaving an infrastructure behind. And I've talked about the Tartarians before in this Tartarian Empire. And after this question, it just brought it back to life. So many things I see of what's happening now does relate back to this old world time frame. And, you know, civilizations, they run in cycles. And those in the know, they know this. These evil powers that were, they plan ahead. And, I mean, think about it. How many of them have bunkers or this underground stuff? Or, you know, see these military bases that are how many levels deep? People in the know, they know that they're going to have to eventually go underground whenever event happens in order to preserve at least some continuity of society so they can then reemerge and recapture what's left and enslaving the rest. And that's what happened when the Tartarian Empire was destroyed in the midst of the mud flood because that was the event that took back a huge part of that civilization. And I get that, the popularity of insane asylums, they were created for those that wouldn't buy into the cycle of lies. And think about what happens there. You get lobotomized, you get, what, shock treatments, drugs, all this kind of stuff. It's kind of hard to share the truth when your brain's like scrambled eggs. Are you going to believe a person that's rambling and, and ranting on about stuff? No, you, you delegitimize any kind of coherency that that person has. So whatever they say, if they do get it out, sounds like gibberish. You know, they take the kids of these people or they find women who are willing to be just kind of like moms and, and mass produced kids to redistribute the population. They take them on trains, orphan trains. You got these incubator babies to repopulate areas. And people just look at it. They don't even question it because I get during that time you couldn't. You're going to find yourself in an insane asylum. I didn't say that. There is nothing like that in our history. And I got the you know, they just basically forced and, and segregated the adults that wouldn't submit to this new regime once everything started to become repopulated and reestablished and reclaimed and all these other things. And then on top of that, what do you have to do in history? You hear about what? And you might hear a little partial truth. 
you have some disease that comes in. How many times is there some disease or some plague that comes in killing a ton of people? Well, what was it, 1910, we had the Spanish flu? I believe it was 1910. And that mimics this time in regards to, you know, the shots they're giving out. They're just trying to thin the herd a little more and make people so they can't have kids. So the population is a little smaller. And when things get unruly, the goal is to create fighting between people and illness because you're wanting to dilute who's out there before you have this time to come because you're trying to mitigate and diminish the amount of people who are going to survive this thing because if you think you're going to go into hiding to reemerge later you want to have a very small population to try to manage and take control of once you come back out into the world you also how many times have we heard about these huge fires Chicago, for example, I mean, just huge fires that destroy buildings, whole city blocks and parts of history that are hard to explain. Only so much can be built by horse and buggy and lantern light and, you know, these archaic tools that they show you a picture of, the mallets and, and wood tools and all that kind of stuff. And the buildings, I mean, these buildings that were supposedly built are so exquisite that they can't, or at least they aren't, even being replicated today. And people of that time... Think about it. People are smart. They're not going to waste their time and resources on this glamorous trim and windows and, and large doors and how much stuff is even uncovered underground because there was a mud flood. They try to elude that these buildings were built. Nobody's going to build a story underground when you are of limited resources and horse and buggy then. Where are you hauling all the dirt to? All this other stuff. It's just none of it makes sense. And if the story is too hard to believe, then they have to burn down the evidence. So what do you do? You keep a couple great magnificent buildings that you want to steal and live in and rule from like you're the king of this new land and then you want to destroy the rest and think about it look at the buildings that were built you can even tell go to any older town one of those small towns look at the capitol building municipal building and then look at the buildings around it it almost looks shanty style next to these exquisite stone buildings and that's because the stone buildings are original and the other stuff was what was really built by the horse and buggies and all that and you don't travel on dirt roads and have all this dirt cobblestone stuff um, and then have these exquisite buildings. It just, none of it fits. None of it makes sense. And so the other thing that came to me was a World's Fair. Have you guys looked at that? The structures that were later destroyed, just none of it makes sense. No one goes to that much effort to destroy something intentionally. So you create fires and destruction. You gotta get rid of your evidence. You don't want people to start thinking, hey, you can't even replicate that now. How in the world did they build it then? It's because they didn't. Then you throw in some wars. Money's made on both sides. We all know that. Most times there's a hidden propaganda involved in the war. The war's not even what we even think it's about. More infrastructures destroyed. Churches, libraries, statues, knowledge. And then after World War II, the textbooks were rewritten to make sure that everyone understood the narrative that was a result of the war. And even though those living in Europe had a truth that wasn't popular... Not all of them, but a huge amount of people when they were doing research and trying to interview, they were forbidden to speak on it. And many connected to the powers that were, and listen to this, many that were connected to the powers that were, wanted to make sure that certain groups stayed protected from that point forward as a result of the war. And I'm trying to say it without saying it, but I really encourage people to critically think you shouldn't have to protect people from free thinking, sharing, or thought they're having or an opinion that they're having unless you're worried that those thoughts or opinions are true and they go against the narrative that you want everyone else in the world to think. And this holds true even today in our current world of craziness. So think about it. If you're told, hey, what you think is illegal or you can't say it or we're going to call you this name or ruin a career or uh, punish you in some way or whatever, if they're trying and willing to do that over a thought or a feeling or an opinion, why are they so threatened by it? Because it challenges a narrative that they want pushed at all costs. So most times your thought is probably the truth. And I stand by that. So yes, there's many agendas they're trying to push out there. Most result in money being funneled to some corporate entity, many owned by members of the powers that were. That's really the thing. Power, greed, hunger, and money. They don't care about the people. Only those few that they want to thrive and survive and stay at the top. They've crept into almost all areas of our life from food to medicine, air, water, school, politics, religion, you name it. 
You have something out there. They want control over it because they want control over you. And in all honesty, it's the real virus of the world is their greed and hunger and wanting control. And now more than ever, people need to use their internal compass and not let this propaganda machine take hold. And that's really all I have for this reading, which could go on forever about the lies and mistruths we have been force-fed our whole life and has just completely manipulated and tried to create this illusion that they want, this matrix that we live in. They're the ones trying to create it out of what it is they want. So hold that in your heart and really think about it and listen to your intuitive filter question everything with a healthy healthy set of skeptic eyes and just trust your inner self. I'm going to leave you with that. By all means, please leave a comment, like, and share my work. Um, I just started this buy me a coffee thing, which is really cute. You can go in and buy coffee to tip. So if you like my content and you want to support, please go in and check me out on that. And that is all I have for today. And I will see you in my next video. Again, I'm Lynn with Psychic Focus at psychicfocus.blogspot.com. Thank you. Bye.